Ready? Episode with William. Take one. Hi, I'm Sharon Landon, and welcome to the Old Asian Lady Show. Today, my guest is William Liu. He is a dancer, choreographer, teacher, um, lots of other、uh, lots of other titles. Let me see. Let let me think. Filmmaker, and you are the co-founder of. Crazy Family Productions. Productions yeah. yeah, I'm a retired dancer now. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, you're <laughs> no, no, a retired、okay. dancer. We'll talk about that.、Yeah. <laughs> but、um, so you were born in Taiwan. Yes, I was. But then you've lived most of your life abroad. So yes. Can you kind of tell me a little bit about your、uh, yeah, journey? Yeah, of course.、Uh, my dad is actually Indonesian, and my mom's Taiwanese. So、um, I was born in Taipei, and then when I was three, they took me. And we moved to Indonesia, and then,、um, well, to make a long story short, my dad is quite a complicated man. <laughs> He was quite abusive, actually. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. So、um, while we were living there, oh, it sounded really dramatic, but it's really, it kind of is, but not anymore now. But、um, we were basically kind of took、oh, like we were kind of imprisoned. <laughs> In a way,、oh、we couldn't、gosh. leave Indonesia for some time because、yeah. um, he was quite abusive. And when my mom wanted to divorce him,、uh, he had a lot of、uh, influence in the government at that time.、Mm-hmm. So、um, when we wanted to leave, I just remember one day we went to Taiwanese embassy. The next day,、uh, because my sister was born in Indonesia,、mm-hmm. um, we. We went to Taiwanese embassy to get paperwork for my sister and me and my mom,、um, and then the next day when we went back, all our things were gone. Wow! <laughs> and then、uh, my dad had all our paperwork, so we couldn't leave the country. We were ba- blacklisted. <laughs> we couldn't leave the country. At first, we thought it was just a, a, a mental procedure, or it was like a like a lie that he told us.、Uh-huh. And then one day,、um, one year, we wanted to do、uh, go on a vacation with my dad. He he forgot to took our names off the list, so we got to the airport. We couldn't leave that day. We had to leave the next day. So that's when we found out that it was actually real. Oh. <laughs> so we were living there for some times, and then we basically escaped. Wow. And then we、uh, so we and then I moved to the states and went. So you escaped to the to, to the, the states, states because we had、uh, family friends were a、uh, pastor.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so then the, he kind of helped us. To get out of、mm-hmm. Indonesia, and then、um, we, yeah. So that's how I ended up in Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. My mom was my adopted mom was born in Idaho, Boise,、yeah. Idaho. Oh, I, I was. Oh, yeah. I was living in、uh, Kimberly, Idaho. It's、oh, like four、yeah. miles outside of Twin Falls. So it's very, it's really small, small tiny place. Yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. With I think it was. Let me think. I I think it was like a seventy. Like my graduation.、Uh, Like my graduation year, I, I think it was like a, there were only seventy two graduating seniors, so it was like a really small, really small、yeah, public school. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, so I end up in Idaho,、uh, and then, and then I basically stayed in the states for quite some time. I went to college there, and then I worked there for some time, and then, um. And then I moved to the Netherlands, Rotterdam.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I worked there for about six years. And、But、you're still living in the Netherlands when we met. When we yeah, 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 when we first met. Yeah, I was like six. Wait, about seven. Seven years, but but I met you before、year. you decided to move back or something. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are still. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you started your journey off with a bang there. Yeah. Sorry. Um. So when you guys left um Indonesia then. Uh, you went to the 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 states. How old were you? You said you were in high school. I was in high school. I was like, let me think. I think I was like sixteen. Oh, sixteen. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Okay. And how was that? I mean, it was a Actually, change from Indonesia to the U.S. Because I think, I mean, it it was very different. But then,、uh, even、uh, when we were living in Indonesia, we tried to escape a few times. <laughs> so. <laughs> But it was because my mom couldn't speak Indone- Indonesian,、mm-hmm. and then we didn't really have any much help. We had、uh, help with、uh, from my dad's previous wife. 
Okay. Who experienced the same thing oh. with my dad, but she, because she was Indonesian, she had some connections that she disappeared for two years. <laughs> anyway, so then, uh, but later on we met her through her, uh, like my half siblings. Mm -hmm. And one of them lived with us because the college that she went was like right by where we lived in Indonesia. So that's kind of how we met. And then when she saw how my dad treated us, mm -hmm. so one night she, she kind of like helped us and then we wow. kind of ran away. We ran away a few times. Actually. Wow. We even changed our names and things like that. But it was really difficult because my mom uh, was Taiwanese, so we didn't really have proper uh, paperwork. Mm -hmm. So we... It was difficult, so we couldn't really run away for a long time. Um, so, uh, what was your question? <laughs> Why did I end up uh, start talking, talking about, about your journey? Yeah, my journey. Yeah, yeah. So with it bang. was yeah. So <laughs> it was different because of, it was different yet not because Indonesia never felt like home. Mm -hmm. It was home, but never felt like home because um, because of my dad. And then also when we went to school, um, although we had like some really good friends, but in the beginning it was also quite difficult because I learned Indonesian in school. Mm -hmm. So then my Indonesian at that time was very proper. But in Indonesia, they don't really speak proper Indonesian Is it outside. the class thing where the proper is... Not really, but uh, they use a lot of slang. Okay. And then because there's a lot of dialects in their uh, different regions, so then there's a lot of mixing of like they use a little bit of English, a little bit of kind of... Hokkien, right. Chinese kind of like thing. So then, um, for example, when you say I in proper Indonesian, uh, you learn it saya or aku, but that word are rarely used outside of school. Oh. They have different words for it. So, um, so that's why we always got, well, uh, we were made fun of because we sounded very like textbook Indonesian. <laughs> But so then the people always call us Taiwanese. Go to school too? But I at mean, home, yeah. because they have like friends, but with my dad, we weren't allowed to be out. We, the moment we got home, we have, oh, we had to ask permission to leave the house. Okay. So you didn't have the outside influence of other people speaking the, the local uh, language. Right. Slowly as we got older, we start to kind of like, we start meeting like, you know, uh, like other friends from our neighborhood mm -hmm. and then that's kind of slowly uh changed but then we people always referred to us like oh that uh taiwanese well they want taiwanese margaret oh. um so we always thought oh taiwan is our home mm -hmm. but then when we uh when uh i got to the states it felt different but yet uh because i went to half international school mm -hmm. back in indonesia so it was okay but I mean, like it was different, but we also moved around a lot in Indonesia. So it always felt like that's just another move. At right, that time. right. So it did it wasn't that difficult. Mm -hmm. I find it more difficult moving back to Taiwan, like as far as that cultural clash, not in the beginning, but towards the end, after I lived here for three to four years, that's when I start feeling, whoa, I really feel the <laughs> culture difference. <laughs> Okay, so you didn't experience that much of a shock then when you moved to the States. Because, well, one of the things I feel like is probably because you guys were free and you're yes. not. So we were know. really, like, we felt relieved. But yeah. also, we watched uh, so many um, American TV oh, shows really? with happy families. And so it's always felt like, oh, America, this, you know, like, that's where everybody seems happy. I mean, um, yeah, it, so it felt, it didn't feel so scary. It felt scary, but not. Right. And people were really nice. I mean, uh, in Kimberly, I was probably the only one of the two Asians. Yeah, there were only one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because I think there there was another kind of Asian or maybe half. I think Hawaiian. I'm not sure. So I was. It was very obvious. And then there was no. I'm pretty sure there was no African American at that right. time. I had a, I had an American uh, African American friend from church, but then even. Uh, her parents wouldn't let her go to public school, so she was homeschooled, I remember. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. But I had a good experience. I mean, like, um, yeah, there were a lot of Mormons, mm -hmm. and most Mormons that I met, they're really nice, actually. So. Oh. Yeah. Did uh, so, did you, <laughs> <laughs> so did you convert or something? No, no, I didn't. No, no, but there were, yeah, because I think they get such a bad rap. I mean, like, there's also, I mean, yeah. the churches are kind of scary, but most of the Mormons that I met, 
they were really nice to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think um, religions, you know, they just twist it. A lot of times, it's things are twisted. Uh, organized religions yeah, yeah. Are twisted beyond. And if you're yeah, a, yeah, totally. a, a part of of the whichever group that it's, you know, yeah, you, you it gets you, political. It gets everything. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so in in school, then when you were there, you already there in high school. But did you um, you went to college? Did you um, study a particular? Um, yeah, I actually studied film first. So, so oh. I was like because I I think uh, yeah I think I told you before my, because my mom was an actress before she mm -hmm. married my dad. So um, I don't know why I think both my sister and I we always had this dream. Oh, we also want to be in that industry. Mm. Um, just because I think also growing up with my dad being so abusive, movies had always been our escape. Right. So we always loved watching movies because we, it felt like we could live other people's lives mm -hmm. or TV shows. So then um, my sister, I think I remember she wanted to be like a costume designer. Or oh, like, you know, like, really? yeah, yeah. Oh, none of us wanted to be in front of the camera in the beginning. Yeah. So then. Um, <laughs> now look what happened. Yeah, now look what happened. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to study cinematography. So then, um, yeah, so then I went to college to study film. Oh, so that was the, what was the Cambridge? That, no, uh, no, no, I went to uh, Chapman, 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 Chapman University. University. Yeah, oh, is Orange. that, spe they specialize in the arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. they're a liberal, liberal arts school. Liberal yeah. arts school. And Private you... school, really expensive. So, so that's also why I switched mm -hmm. my major later on. I tried double major because I started as a film student and then my second year there because in the States you require to take like some general ed classes. So there's one of them. It has to be like a PE class, I think. Mm -hmm. So I tried to kind of find a swimming class or something, but none of it could uh, uh, fit with my film schedule. Mm -hmm. So then I found a dance class. Oh, so that's kind of how it started. And then I. I tried to, I registered, but they wouldn't let me because I'm not a major at that time. Or I never had dance experience at that time. Oh, you had to have prerequisites? Or yeah, yeah. So I had to, I had to ask the professor at that time. And then the, the teacher at that time was the head of the dance department. Mm -hmm. And at first she was like, hmm, since you don't have a, you know, you've never taken any dance classes, um, why didn't you try for a week first? And then if you can, then you still can drop it without having it on the record. So then I tried, but because I had, I did high jump in high school. Mm -hmm. Not so good, but okay. <laughs> so I could jump. And then I had some flexibility. Um, so then when I took the class, somehow she's like, oh, you can't, like, so she told me I, I should stay. So she designed a program for me. So then. Then she offered me scholar, full scholarship. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just based on your... No, after a year. So in the beginning, oh. she kind of gave, like, she asked me, like, do, uh, she told me, because I really liked the, her class. So she told me to take uh, another one or two more the following semester. Mm -hmm. So I did it. And then she knew. Um, and then she offered me, yeah, she's like, I could, she, she said she could design a program for me so I could... She wanted to make sure I could find a job after, but she could give me a scholarship. And then they, they also needed male dancers, I think, at that yeah, time. I was going to say, what was so special about you? Because they needed, you were just there at the right place and you had a, a teacher or professor that really. Yeah, I mean, I also had a dance teacher major, that said, though. like, you know, don't drop, uh, don't, don't drop your film major. You're not oh. going to make it in dance. Oh. Yeah. You know, that's why, I, okay, you know, hearing that kind of really, um, Re makes me remember something that happened in uh, my high school. Right. Because a lot of times we're in, 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 in high school or college and stuff, and we really respect yeah. uh, professors and teachers. And I remember my acting teacher, I still remember her name. And um, she told me one time, and I, and I love to, you know, music or, or perform and, and stuff. And she told me, Sharon, you will never be a good actress because you're too emotional. And because of what she said, for the longest time, that affected me, you know, in terms of my own thought about, well, my own self-confidence, but, yeah, right. but in terms of acting or You need to be emotional. Stuff, you need to I tap know. into your emotions. So, what, so. Does, what did that, what, 
Yeah, what but did that th that's like people. So you know, people say that, and they don't realize it really affects kids or, or yeah, people totally, in that right. in that stage. So when you, when that teacher said that to you about the film school, or don't, think, don't drop the film. How but I think I had like my mentor was the uh, the head of the department at that time. She was really good in the way she approached uh, her uh, teach uh, what do you call it, dance pedagogy and like the way she teaches. Um, she really inspired me so mm -hmm. um we still we still keep in touch she's like my american mom oh, nice. <laughs> but um so i think one i had two teachers that i don't think they one was not such a friendly teacher anyway but the other one uh said it in a out of concern i think like mm -hmm. i think she she thought i would have a better chance as a film maker she thought i well, i don't know right but anyway so when they told me that i just remember it was like I'm going to prove them wrong. <laughs> mm. So yeah, so I remember, I think not like maybe a couple of years or three years after I graduated from college, we were teaching at the same, <laughs> like, a, <gasps> like a convention or like the tea. So then I was like, oh, at least I proved her. But I don't think she remembered. She told me not. To oh, wow. Well, so you progressed really fast then if within the yeah because the, i think because when i was younger i did actually i did some lessons like martial arts mm -hmm. and then i did swimming a little bit so i had some uh basic coordination right and then i think because also my mom like maybe genetically we're uh, we have pretty uh we're quite flexible in our joint mm -hmm. so i mean like i wasn't super flexible in the beginning but i had the potential because of like maybe my bone structure like mm -hmm. you know because for men generally, um, a lot of time it's a, what do you call it? A bony restriction that kind of restrict them being able to dance. So you want to start early on to oh. kind of, so you grow into certain shape, but because maybe because I did some swimming and all that, but my hips are also not so stiff. So I could actually stretch my muscle out. I could stretch oh. my, uh, so in the end, it was actually not, I mean, I had a lot, I worked really hard, but uh, it was not impossible, I think. But generally speaking, because of my teacher, um, my mentor, I also have that kind of that same way of seeing um, dance or teaching. Mm -hmm. I think like if you love it enough, right? I think that's if important. you breathe it, if you sleep. Yeah. So you actually it, live yeah, 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 dance for right. Sleep. I think because in the beginning when I did film, well, everything had to be uh, done. Um, in oh, like what do you call it? analog like what's you know, like you had to film with film rolls and all that so i remembered in order for me to graduate i had to spend at least ten thousand us dollars back then in the 90s that's a lot that was even now it's a lot of money um for to graduate to make a short film like you know and then we i just remember we had to there are certain ways of buying the film rolls you use like the leftovers from other oh, productions like things like that right, right, right. Like but that. then uh, you, you know like <laughs> Creating short films with those cameras, R-E-S-R, I think, I can't remember now, yeah. But those cameras, you need three or four people to operate that, mm -hmm. and then you need to rely on a bunch of other students mm -hmm. to make your project. Right. But spending $10,000 and relying on all, a lot of times I feel like other, like students, they're not, this sounds terrible. I love my classmates, but sometimes they're not as reliable because they also have things that they need to do. Yes. So then I don't want to waste $10,000 for nothing. And that, that time, because we escaped from our debt, mm -hmm. financially, we're not really mm -hmm. that stable. And then Chapman was quite expensive. So Origin I was going to transfer after the first year. Mm -hmm. And then that's also what, and then they felt like I had potential. So they offered me scholarship. And then from film, I felt like that was a good step because with film, I love the arts. I felt I love the creativity in film. But at that time, I felt like there's so many walls and doors in between. I have mm -hmm. to rely on somebody. I need money. I need certain equipment, cameras. I need good lighting, script, script writing, and all that. I feel like the art work itself with me is like there's so many things in between me. And then yeah. the moment I discovered dance, I felt like I was in it. I had yeah. direct contact with this. Uh, process of creation or something yeah because you know, you're I don't using know your I body it. right, right yeah do whatever create whichever art that you 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 want to create right. allow your creativity to go on without relying right. on i feel like i could else. express myself right yeah. away through dance with film i had to rely on so many people right. at that time so that was 
also part of the decision why I felt like, okay, I'm going to switch. But I had also a different mentor, like advisor from the film department. He told me, he's like, you don't need a film degree to get into the film industry, <laughs> he told me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. But at that time, it's weird, huh? With dance, mm -hmm. most dance companies wouldn't take somebody who are not without, without a dance degree. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about now. Now I think it's slightly different. But at that time, a lot of the uh, contemporary or modern dance companies, mm -hmm. they wanted people with, with uh, yeah, a some kind of degree, degree in dance. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's kind of supposed to be the proof yeah, that, yeah, you, yeah. that you, you, you with, follow up with you your commitment, you did your training, yeah. and all that. Yeah. So what type of dance did you, um, you know, did you love to do or, or did you focus on in your own dance? Okay. You probably would uh, know that the first time I watched, uh, the first time I discovered dance was uh, through that American show, Star Search. <laughs> Star Search? Do you remember Star Search? Oh, do you ever? Years that's so yeah, long ago. It's like in the that. 80s, I, I, do I think. Yeah. That. Oh. Um, they do a lot of this kind of jazz dance uh -huh. and commercial work. So I always remember, oh, those are so cool. So that's also the first class that I took at Chapman. Oh, they have okay. a great dance program. Right. Um, anyway, so I started out with jazz and then I got into modern work. But uh, because we were living in this, uh, because it was in the States, mm -hmm. also because it was in Southern California, uh, the program tends to be a little bit more uh, well-rounded. Mm -hmm. Program, we had to do commercial uh, dance, which is jazz or okay. hip hop, uh, yeah. this kind of thing. But then, and then uh, that says us, we have to do that. but. Uh, we normally we would emphasis on one thing. So I, my emphasis was on um, contemporary modern dance. Okay, so that's what you continue with. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like back in back then, I mean, I work at Di I've also worked for Disneyland as a dancer. So that was more commercial dance, and then we did like well, did I did you musical. Did like Mickey Mouse? Thing? Were you in the troupe behind no, Mickey Mouse uh, or something? Mulan Parade. <laughs> oh, Mulan <laughs> Parade. Yeah. But funny enough, in the I was one of the soldiers. There were 12 soldiers. Oh, there were only two or three Asians. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. too. Was that a detriment being, I mean, Asian? Well, I mean, did you have to overcome any barriers um, after graduation? I've had university is different, but once I, you got into the workplace. I think there were barriers, but it was not so um, loud, mm -hmm. uh, outspoken. I think this, I think sometimes America gets such a bad rap because people always, uh, people complain and the media writes about it. But I think it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. But so people always think, oh, Americans, uh, there's a lot of racism and all that. I'm sure, uh, I know there is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but when you live there, when it's one on one with people, generally you don't really feel yeah. it. Yeah. You feel it more when it's like, you know, with political party, when you group people into one thing. Yeah. I think so it's, um, so when I was living there, I didn't feel, I didn't, I was, I was also lucky enough. I never had people directly tell me like, oh, but I, I, I mean, I could sense it sometimes uh, through an audition. Oh, I'm not white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not this, you know, what, oh, I don't have this specific that, white, you yeah. know, guy look that I wouldn't, you know, so it's, I mean, that, that's pretty normal, but people are generally quite inclusive. So I, I got in because of my, I could skill, I could skill. Say, uh, confidently yeah. say, say that. So, um, uh, but we all had to do Asian makeup, so because all the oh, white people have to. Move, so move even including me. like all our the Asian dancers would also have to do Asian makeup. We all had to draw <laughs> our eyes like oh. this. So, like, I even argue with them. It's like, but I'm Asian, <laughs> and they're like, no, Reverse. you need to do it. Also, yes, yeah, it's uh, so funny. They taught us how to do Asian, Asian makeup. makeup. Yeah, like oh, you have first you have to draw the eyes this way. Oh no, was it's it really like funny. the Fu Manchu mustache? Yeah. Or did oh yeah, we had that, mustache that's so with the speakers. Like we had this like a mustache, <laughs> and then we were dancing in the summer. He it was so hot, so it started to fall uh -huh. apart while we were dancing. <laughs> it was like this, and we're like, and they got so annoying. We be like, stick it to our costume. <laughs> like it's very funny. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, so, so, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm still no, no, thinking about your mustache. Yeah. Um, so after you, you did stints in Disney, you did all of that. And when did you, um, I mean, was there like one thing that you did or one performance or work that you did that, you know, cemented your name there out there with the dance i think it was mostly be, uh it was mostly through company work like uh, contemporary dance company so mm -hmm. i was um i graduate when i graduated I, I stopped working at disneyland so i went yeah <laughs> so because in high school this sounds bad i love disneyland but 
it was quite depressing oh. working there. I have a lot of friends working there. I don't want to say bad things about it, but I think、uh, Disneyland is amazing. But、um, working、culture. there, yeah, because、maybe. I think a lot of people, for a lot of、uh, performers, that's their end goal. Yeah, yeah. That's their dream job. So、uh, I I met a lot of、uh, school、uh, college mates that once they got a job at Disneyland performing, they dropped out of school. Oh, and then for me, when I see that, and I've seen some people that work there for so long, I think it's great. That's their dream. But then, I couldn't do it. So、mm-hmm. then, after about two seasons, I left, and then, yeah. So then I continue, and then I dance. Once I graduate, I dance for、uh, a company, and that's kind of where when I got it helped me to boost my your、uh, name kind of or recognition. Your name, yeah, yeah. and also. Because of my mentor that I mentioned, or her name is Cyrus Cyrus Parker Jeanette. Is she、uh, still in the? Yeah, she's、business? yeah. She,、uh, she from the from Chapman. Later on, she got、uh, hired to be. Oh, I'm not sure her title, but she was like the dean of the at Cal State Long Beach, and then later on, she received awards like a、uh, dance educator. Oh, oh, California Educator of the Year or something like that.、Wow. But she's like a quite amazing woman. But.、Um, I think also because I had her class. Also, we also took dance pedagogy with her.、Um, I also I always felt that I was pretty good at teaching dance. So、um, at that time, also in California in general, modern dance is only they're only offered in universities,、mm-hmm. and then they have like few companies that、uh, offer them. So like a lot of、uh, freelance modern dancers would take them. But they're rarely offered at、uh, studio levels because most people just want to do jazz dance or competition、mm-hmm. dance. But at that time, I was actually I thought I felt like I did a pretty good job. So I just remember my classes were there were also lines of people waiting. Oh wow! So they have to sign up, and then there were like people waiting in line. <laughs> so so you what what do you mean? You just、uh, you start a studio, or you just said no? No, I, I was teaching a different I, teach? I was teaching a different school.、Right. So then um、uh, so then I. But also because the company was doing pretty well, so people started to know me. And then I taught this at this one school. They asked me if I want to do、uh, dance competition. I refused to do jazz, so I said I would do like an open category, but I want I want to do contemporary dance.、Mm-hmm. So then、uh, I think because they won an award or something like that. So then all of a sudden my classes got really popular. <laughs> so that kind of helped. So then all of a sudden I have like all this different offer from different、mm-hmm. studios, and then. That kind of helped me pay for my other job. Like this dancing in、uh, with dance companies, generally they're not paying so well unless if you dance for like this big major company in、mm-hmm. New York, maybe.、Mm-hmm. But even then, the living cost there、yeah. is quite high. So yeah, so that kind of helped. Right. Well, yeah. You guys, some of the, the troops that you were in, you guys won awards. Yes,、yeah, they too, they、right? in the beginning yeah we got because we were quite new and then I think we were not part of the. We were not based in LA. We were、mm-hmm. based in Orange County, so、right. I think we weren't really directly competing with anyone. So politically,、mm-hmm. I think that was also should I say this? But yeah, yeah. so so yeah. So then somehow we got yeah. So people we got there、yeah, the, uh, back then. I don't know if this award is still there, but it's kind of like the Oscar for dance community、wow. in some California. So、um, Lester Horton Award. So yeah, so they got some and then got nominated. So that kind of. Help and then won some awards, so yeah. Because so you were just talking about you you started teaching and stuff. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, you you still have a baby face now. I feel, like. <laughs> but back then, which is how many years ago? Yeah. So just imagine that you're teaching people already at that time. I mean, but that's the thing. That's the best part about the states. I think.、Yeah. Um, That's one thing that I really respect. Because later on, I moved to、uh, Europe and then in Taiwan. I mean, like people are teaching, but there's so much. People are so eager to learn,、mm-hmm. and then、uh, even for at studios, even though like you know, because、uh, in Europe, most dance studios would be considered as amateur dance school, but in U.S. because it's kind of out dance. How should I say? The levels are different. They're quite. They're a lot more professional than what. General studios are right, right. Like, so、uh, they're also very competitive.、Mm-hmm. So that kind of helped. Yeah, 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 I don't know. Yeah, what was I saying? I feel like I kind of went off 
the tangent. I'm just I think that every every place is different yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of the styles and in terms of the way they see uh dance yeah, yeah. groups or professional right, right. Or, um, but also the mentality like the philosophy like also the way uh the, how the education works in US like outside, I don't know about I'm not talking about what's happening in school, but generally in the dance community itself in Taiwan, uh, in U.S., they're very. Um, they get free. They're quite. To do. I, I've, in general, I, I mean, there's always some uh, bad ones and good ones, but mm -hmm. in general, they're quite. Uh, mode. Uh, they're uh, what's what's the word for it? They're quite nurturing, or they're very. Um, uh, what's the right um, word? No, I can't think about the word. Uh, they're very mo. They try to inspire you. They right. try to mo motivate you. They try to kind of encourage. They're very encouraging. Mm -hmm. So uh, most people can pursue dance freely. Right. So even if they don't have the perfect dance body, mm -hmm. and then I mean, like, and then you know at one point whether you're gonna make it or not. But generally, people are like teachers. Uh, most teachers that would teach you ways of to uh, to embrace your. Uh, shortcomings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and make it into your uh, personality, yeah. you know, like, you right, know, your strength. Right. But uh, in Europe, again, not ev all over Europe, but generally speaking, uh, when you decide you want, same thing, I think, in Taiwan a little bit, if you decide you want to dance, quite early on, maybe in junior high or high school, they start to kind of track you into that program. Oh. And then to get into that program, then maybe they'll look at your body. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So then, not more um, right, right, right. Well, it's like, oh, it's like oh, anatomically, have. it's impossible yeah. for you to oh, be a dancer right. or something like that. So then, most dancers that uh, they're producing, especially in Northern Europe, mm -hmm. they naturally come to specific type of bodies, or right. they they train since they're a certain age. Or I mean, there's also there's there are always exceptions, but generally that's the that's what happens in Europe. So uh, when I dance in Europe, the passion is very different than the. Uh, passion in with the American dancers in general. Is it because of because American dancers in general they know they have oh I don't have the best feet or mm. my I'm a little bit stiffer here or I, you know my arms are not perfect or my feet are not perfect, but they ha they love it so much. Yeah, they just want to kind of yeah it's it's like, the you know like yeah it's coming the, from within themselves and it's a right. passion for it rather than oh i'm i'm in this for my job even though uh, right. like in other troops in other right. countries they they might love to do that but it's 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 kind of like they're in a box right right but sometimes i also notice it's not just with the dance community they just kind of have this kind of passion for what they do they felt like oh there's a reason why i'm doing this they try to find reason behind oh. what they do you know <laughs> like even like a janitor for example or like a clean or like you know like somebody who does clean like i felt like oh their work has a purpose you right. know like they they would find different ways of to be better in their jobs but the mentality Again, not for everyone, right, but right. in general, yeah. sometimes here it's like, oh, it's a job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so it feels very different sometimes when you dance, or, or not dance, like when you work like in Europe in, and in here. Right. And even in Taiwan, sometimes with jobs also the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, that, that that you you mentioned these these differences. So, so was it, based, I mean, based on you coming from the U.S. dance culture where it's very creative and things like that and going into um, d working in the Netherlands or in Europe, um, did, was there things that you really had to adjust within your own creativity process or, you know, because... Um, I moved around a lot even the States, so then I felt it's not that big difference. It's just that I could feel... Um, I think dancing in the States for me, again, right. it's not for everyone. I could really feel the energy yeah. of the people. Like uh, with the company that I dance with in the Netherlands, they also have this very particular energy that they, they love what uh, what we did. So I also got some, you know, like, you know, kind of this energy mm -hmm. feedback from them, but it's slightly different, mm -hmm. but there's a little bit more of like, oh, I don't get paid enough for this. So this is not part of my job. But in US, a lot of it, they, Oh, this is what I love. This is why I breathe for. I, this is yeah. what I live for. So it's very different. Yeah. Uh, like even um, even working at Disneyland. That's why I felt like even though I said I I get a little depressed. Uh, like you know, I get, get a little depressing because I find it that oh, that's the end for everyone around me. Oh. 
this is their dream their job. So I felt like I felt stuck sometimes. Yeah, you want to go higher. Yeah, I want to go pursue places. different things. So, yeah. But there's this energy. Oh, this is the best thing. Mm. We we have a purpose. We 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 need to make uh, the the guests of the park happy. happy. Like we get to make them day brighter. That's so our goal. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like I feel like they have a purpose, but. Yeah, so that's one thing. Mm. There's this type of energy that I really enjoy. Right. I felt like, oh, we're not quite there yet. It's okay. We have this fire. That, yeah. You know, we, we do it together. But, um. So is that, is that how, what you imparted to the, the students that you, um, lectured or taught? I mean, is that. I try to teach them to embrace their shortcomings because it's not, I think what they see. Mm hmm. Oh. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not skinny enough. Rarely people see that outside of them. Mm -hmm. uh, except if you're when you're in Taiwan, they're, they're going to keep pointing you that you're not skinny enough. <laughs> but generally speaking, um, yeah, I feel like, um, people, dancers in general, general, or even art students, any, anybody, yeah. they so focus on their shortcomings. Mm -hmm. They forget what they're what they're good they're at. Yeah. 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 But, you know, what makes them special? Yeah. I want to have to say th that it doesn't, it's not even limited just to, to the arts because even if you're in a corporate world or, you know, yeah, totally, wherever, totally. Yeah, right. it's all about your self identity and your self confidence in terms of who you are and what you are. But the whole thing is that most of the culture in the U.S. or other right. places, it's other people saying things about you that make you feel that you are or not. Right, so, right. Yeah. So you've asked them to embrace their um, their shortcomings. Right, right. And oh, this is more recently. I think we talked a little bit about it right before we start uh, recording this. Um, I'm also discovering the power of giving compliments, mm -hmm. I think. I felt like in you... This sounds like I'm like keep saying like oh US is better. It's really not. There's like good and bad. Right, both but it's based but, on your experience yeah, too. But there's also this culturally also like uh, in their educations or in the way of uh, most people like how people see things. They always see. I feel like when you learn to give compliments, mm -hmm. you also learn to see your value. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you also learn to see what's good in front of you. Yeah. But um. Sometime in the dance community, because I've traveled around a lot in U.S., people really give compliments. And sometimes maybe for people from Taiwan, they've said, oh, this sounds very fake or it's just they're just being nice. But it's really not mm -hmm. sometimes. There are some fake people, mm -hmm. but generally speaking, they really see something nice and they want you to acknowledge it because they acknowledge this, all the good things around them. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I go to Europe, there's a little bit less of that. Unless they're really close, they're close to you. Yes, it's definitely a cultural right, right. So uh, behavior. If they're good friends with you, they see something yeah. nice, they will say, oh, I really enjoyed that. Um, but when they, they're not, they're like, you know, it's a little bit more quiet. You just worry about yourself, I worry about myself. Yeah. It's a little bit like that in Europe. And then here, it's a bit like, oh, you're no, not. this is not good. No, that's not, or so I feel like it's so easy in Asia to point out what's wrong. Wrong. And but, I think it's partly yeah. because of the way they grew up too, because growing yeah. up, I feel like a lot of Asian parents or tiger moms or whatever types of parents, they pick at little things. They, 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 right. even yeah, they yeah. love them. Their way of showing them is exactly. to pick at them and saying, you got to be better. And their idea is that, you know, if I tell them that they're going to get better and they're going to be, but, but it right. doesn't do that. No, it, no, it, yeah. It the it's going to crush them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So when I teach, at least I try to be a lot more positive. I feel like people need to learn to give not fake compliment, mm -hmm. but a well thought out com compliment that, yeah. and you mean it. If you can't, yeah. then don't Obviously. say it. Like, yeah, but you can practice it, practice this because it really, I think the benefit doesn't only go to the person that you're saying to, but right. also to, for yourself. Yeah, because it's, I, I think it's, it's the energy around yeah, yeah, totally. something happy and positive compared right. to something really dark or negative or cr critical. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, okay. So, um, like you said that you really chose modern dance. I mean, what type of, why did you feel that that was something that you really felt so good about? I well, mean, what in the beginning and also because I didn't have most of my co uh, classmates and colleagues, they, they started training since they were young. 
Mm. I didn't, so I didn't have a lot of the base of the foundation for it. So modern uh, contemporary dance was a lot easier to get into. I mean, for the yeah, long it's not run, like you'd be a ballet right. dancer, you'd really have right. To, yeah. But if you want to pursue professionally, mm. you still need to have ballet base. So, um, so is this easier for me? But towards in the end, I just find uh, with contemporary and modern dance, there's a lot more freedom in uh, how you can express yourself. It's a little bit more freeing than ballet or right. jazz because all they see is oh how high the legs go yeah. and things like that but i learned later on it's not just that even ballet you can it can be freeing yeah um, you so can... yeah, yeah it can be freeing just depending on your teachers and depending on how you see it yeah. because um it's a little bit off tangent but even with ballet you can uh there are two types I don't want to say it's two types of web ballet. There are two components. One is the style, which is like, you know, it's basically like an opera. So there's a story. Mm -hmm, so it's a mm -hmm. performance. And the second one, it's actually the training, which has been uh, developed for over 500 years. So if you want your legs to get up here and have the strength, mm -hmm. you need to take that ballet, thing. not yeah. to dance ballet, but to do the exercises so you have the mus proper muscle to, to be able lift to your it. legs that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, it takes a years and years. People people spend yeah. a lot of time doing that. Um, so you okay. said earlier that um, you re you're a retired dancer. I mean, at what point in your career or your because you're doing I didn't, so well? I, well, I didn't training. plan it actually. Yeah, okay. I didn't plan it, but. I think a lot of it when I, I think I have to be, um, I don't like to do things that I don't want to do, mm -hmm. being forced to do. And I don't want to do things that uh, doesn't have a purpose. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I felt like it's really difficult to explain to my Taiwanese friends because they see a lot of time. Well, not everyone again, but uh, people tend to see it as a job. But to me, job is also, <laughs> I have to have passion for it. Yeah. Otherwise, I can't. Do it. Because your work day passes faster yeah. if you're doing something that you love, you right. enjoy. Yeah. So, um, I don't know why. I think I got a little burnt out when I was uh, dancing in the Netherlands. It was it was probably the best time of my life, but we had uh, hun over 120 performances a year. Wow. We travel all over. And then, so after doing that for four years, um, I got a little burnt out. And then at that time, also, uh, a lot of the arts funding in the Nether Netherlands got cut. Mm. So I felt like that was a like, good transition and I wanted to live closer to my family because they've been living in Taiwan and a lot of their me new memories didn't include me oh, in it. So yeah. I felt like, oh, maybe I should try to live here for some time. And then in the end, I decided to stay here. But when I moved to Taiwan, because I never danced in Taiwan, so I only, I don't really know a whole lot of the dancing here, but some for some reason, it just didn't really also, it just did, didn't motivate you or didn't. But I, I don't want to blame it on the environment because maybe it has nothing to do with it. But just for that moment in time, mm -hmm. like the one since uh, this at this moment in time when I'm living here, I just felt like there's no this urge to dance. Right. And then, um, but also for practicality, I need to make monies. And at that time, I felt like filmmaking was a lot easier. I I, I already started make, doing some film work in the Netherlands, but it was mostly dance film which is a genre that oh, yeah. one doesn't have okay. yeah so when i did that it got into like some festival like busan uh short film festival and things like that so then i felt like oh maybe i can try to explore this it just kind of got me somehow it kind of took me back into the route right. that, where i started at when i was at chapman like life kind of does that yeah you, know, you kind of follow this path and then something comes along that seems right then and, and, and the thing is that a lot of times i feel like people they don't pay as much attention to that or they 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 disregard it like right. for example you followed it and when you felt this you you followed it right. and i think that's where people's lives can you know whether it's right, love right, yeah, or whether yeah. being in the right place at the right time knowing the right people it, it it just becomes smoother so you picked up filming again here yes in taiwan so more professional because when i was doing it in the netherlands it was mostly uh one on my like off time or as okay. a dancer right and then i would uh i would put uh like i would produce a uh, dance film i would like you know do some casting and i would actually uh do audition for dancers <laughs> and things like that but uh here 
I thought I'm going to start with something smaller. So I made like corporate videos and then, but and in Taiwan, they really like um, interviews. So I started doing a lot of interviews and now I'm doing um, a lot of uh, kind of promo materials or marketing content for like the performing arts centers in Taiwan and then uh, educational content and some well, pro smaller commercial work yeah okay so educational content about dance or just um, general education to uh like it is an outreach program to kind of promote the performing arts oh just because of my background with oh. the performing arts and then also in u.s most um uh, most dancers or teachers they're quite active in outreach programs so mm -hmm. because uh when i was dancing in the uh in u.s we were quite involved with like the program that was uh, uh, with uh, we worked with like Orange County Performing Arts Center, mm -hmm. and then there was a program from the Lincoln Center, and then the, the uh, some theaters, and then we worked a lot creating like different kind of programs. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. So when I moved back to uh, like now when I'm doing this work with uh, some of the performing arts centers, I really it felt like it helped me to understand it better because um, yeah. Are, are you spearheading any of these um, projects uh, or? No, because the way it works is always like, you know, uh, like for this one, the head of the um, outreach program is a new department, for example, in Kaohsiung. And they asked me, like, do you have any ideas? Can you write? Uh, do you? And then I asked them because it's a new department, like, do you have any directions? And what have you like, what kind of research have you done? that like, you know, the direction that you guys want to do. And then they mentioned some things that I knew from, back from the States because there's some program from the Kennedy Center and the Lincoln Center that they did. Um, so they were mentioning like, this is some of the things that they were looking at. And then um, I'm not doing any kind of programs like that, but then they, when they uh, reach out to me, they wanted more like video content. They want something for, uh, they can put on their website. So then, I created this, this is not out yet, uh, next month, mm -hmm. it's really rushed. But uh, because in Taiwan, the performing arts is quite, um, they're quite distant with the regular <laughs> Taiwanese folks. They're, they don't really go, they don't have a habit or culture of going to. Right, it's not like, yeah. Theaters, and then and then the, a lot of the theaters here, they produce works that's a bit more, they're not so easy also for, some of, some of it is a lot easier for a, a general audience who enjoy but a lot of it it takes some research and time for them to kind of uh get to get uh, to understand or to enjoy this kind of performances mm -hmm. so then uh i created this um kind of like a, almost like a variety like a not really talked about it's like jemu what do you mm -hmm. call it variety show yeah variety show yeah um or... Where there are two hosts, like two actors. One of them okay. is my sister, actually. Okay. <laughs> so the two actors that have uh, that were they're quite popular and have done some like Taiwanese soaps. Mm -hmm. And then they would uh, basically take the audio. Uh, they would like introduce. They would explore uh, this theater, like all the different performing arts. How they're actually not so different than soap operas. Oh. So, so if you can, it's like a drama content. In no, no, it's like it's mostly like it's mostly the format is a bit like a talk show. Oh, a bit like oh. this, but then there's a little bit of game where they kind of it's, uh, they try out something and then they find common mm -hmm. uh, what do you call, commonalities in mm -hmm. between the two. Because for example, like opera, it's really like the soap opera of the in the old days for regular folks in Italy. You know, mm -hmm. but now it's it's turning into this like you know only the rich would go see the opera kind of like that. So then we just want to kind of bring that out to show the locals how if you can enjoy soap opera, you can actually enjoy all these kind of things right. too because they're as melodramatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're as dramatic. Yeah, you know, like yeah. So everybody and, can yeah, yeah. Enjoy and the it, issue you know? is also almost the same, but also because the education here it's all it's so concrete mm -hmm. so then the way they look at uh abstract art or contempt or, or performing arts they tend to be like oh i don't get it i don't understand oh it needs to be this or what are you trying to say but a lot of times the performing arts it's actually uh it's ref uh, what it's a reflective art right but you take out of it what you you right. you see right right you know yeah I mean, see like, i 
It's okay. not, I always used to dislike abstract art too because for me I thought oh I just like somebody to tell me what is this what is this I mean like, you can also find things but, like that but yeah. a lot of times like when you watch something and then you start feeling like you um it evokes something in you can feel you, you yeah. try to figure out why yeah. do I get this kind yeah. of emotions yeah. in me yeah. and then you realize a lot of it is actually ref yes a reflection of your own story yeah it doesn't it's mean that everything has to be like oh what does it mean to you? Like sometimes you can hate it. That's okay. But that's the whole point. Because it right, right. Ex it, 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 it <coughs> makes, it elicits this kind of reaction, right? right from you right, right. seeing something and you, you hate it. There's something there. Right. Because but people like. need to like know that you don't have to get it. Yeah. You can't, you can ask. I mean, but at the same time, I think a lot of it, because there's a lot of studies that's been done that um, people who go to see the performing arts, Generally, they have much uh, better mental health in general. But uh, well, there are studies. But the thing is also, it's um, it's almost like in Taiwan because mental health been kind of like it's not the priority. Yeah, people don't really talks get it. About it. But it's, when it's you go to theater, yeah, you have your own alone time. You see yeah. it and you get to experience emotion. Mm -hmm. You may hate it or you get you know in a way. It's also therapy for you to kind of figure out yourself because therapy is basically trying to figure out yourself. <laughs> okay, so right? you're saying yeah. that the content of the show that Margaret and this other actors yeah, yeah. Is, so is dealing with... We, we talk about this, how to understand art. So then in the end, they have they also have a round table to talk about this like uh, between all the, like their opera performer, there's a Chinese opera performer, there's a contemporary uh, art, a con contemporary dance artist, <laughs> and then there is, there is a harpist. So this kind of like... Uh, they talk about their experience, why they love art and why art is so important to them mm -hmm. and how they relate to it also personally. Right. And then people realize a lot of it, actually arts may not seem so important, but yeah, it can it, be really useful in yeah. different things. Yeah. And I think it's really good that you have regular people that are doing it to talk about their experiences because oftentimes people that go, go watch art, they don't know Right. You know, all the people that, uh, right. that make this kind of art. Right. Just bring them down to the level where, right. like, hey, yeah. Because, but. for example, uh, it's actually my sister's story, but I think it's also pretty interesting because for her as an actress, then, uh, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, the story with my dad, mm -hmm. she never realized how to love a father or like what a father loves mean mm -hmm. to her mm -hmm. until she's in a film about it when she gets into oh, character. So nice. she discovered you know, a father's love or like understanding forgiveness mm -hmm. through basically acting right? Or watching a show. So it's, it seems so small, but that's the power of right. art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is... Yeah. Yeah, because in cultures that um, don't naturally show emotions that clearly right. and things and they, they hide it or they right. suppress it, I think it's really helpful to be able to, you know, you just make a little step right. to help people connect with themselves right. and their and and their um, background or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. So it's uh, you've already written it, or you guys already. Yeah, when we it? finished filming it's it, it's going to come out. Yeah. On TV or on what? on it's mostly on their platform. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Wow, that's cool. So, what other uh, exciting projects do you have in the works for? Not a whole lot right now. Like after this, because the past year has been quite busy doing a lot of this kind of thing. So I just want to break. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it, it, it is. I feel like this industry is, um, sometimes there's a little bit, it's, it's not so busy, but then other times it's a lot of things happening. Yeah. And you just really get exhausted because there's so many little things that you have to pay, yeah. pay attention to. And plus, for you, you wear a lot of different hats because you not only direct, you... Um, you you edit you do all of this kind of stuff right and you write you wrote yeah, the program. but now with the company we have like a dedicated editor you and got the, it now yeah Ooh. and then we have like somebody who does the sound mixing so it's a little bit easier but mm -hmm. still I mean it's a lot of hard work yeah yeah partly too because when you own a company and you, you have to it's difficult. take the risk yeah yeah mm -hmm. so how did you guys Find the name Crazy Family Productions. Well, there are two parts. I think the first uh, one part of it is, um, I think it's the culture that I carry over with dance. Whenever we're in a production, it always felt like we're, even though we're not blood related, mm -hmm. it felt like home, like theater is also like that, you yeah. know, like 
you're you're living, you know, you're working together, you're practically living together for a period of time. So I felt like it's a family. So whatever we do in a production, I want it to feel like a family. Yeah. And also because although lately I felt like I'm tend to be a little bit more serious, <laughs> but generally I tend to I like to prank <laughs> people. <laughs> I like to be silly. So I thought, oh, crazy family sounds like a good yeah. uh, name. And then the second part is also my mom, my sister, and I were very, we're quite, we're pretty great. We're pretty funny, a family, like in a uh, conventional, non-conventional yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> so we're pretty kind of, some people will, will think, uh, would think of us kind of pretty cuckoo. <laughs> so, you know, in a good way, kind of we're, yeah. we're funny. We're always kind of, we always try to do a little too much and we're, we're, we're really close. Mm -hmm. So also this company, I started with my, my mom, my sister invested in it also. So then that's also part of the reason. So we thought, oh, we're kind of crazy. And then we want to build a new family, crazy. Yeah. Uh, so it turned into crazy family production. It makes sense. I mean, you guys got, you got a lot of uh, crew now. I mean, I've met some of your, your friends uh, that are your crew and it's, I always feel like to have the family environment so that it's not uh, just work kind yeah. of thing and everybody can to get together. But, you know, that goes back to culture again, because yes. in Asian countries, you're more, uh, people are more type family type of thing, where in, in Western culture, they're more like, you know, this is work after work fine, oh, right, right. you can be friends and right, right. but but to, to be able to have the right mix together yeah, yeah definitely cool. and also it's so yeah we're a family regardless of yeah how. we're just kind of having fun and yeah you should respect each other <laughs> or they're always like you know whatever that we say what do we do it's always with a good intention like yeah. the family always feels like that, that yeah way. okay so um where if somebody wanted to find you, where would they go? Really terrible at updating our website, so it's pretty outdated now. But yeah, there's crazyfamilyproductions.com. But generally speaking, you can find us at our studio, mm, which is Taipei. Right, in Zhongshan. Uh, uh, Tender Lu, Tender Chen Road, Section 3. Yeah, really number close. Number 70, yeah. Close to Yuanshan or Ming, uh, Mingchen? Mingchen and Yuanshan, right in the middle. Right. Closer to Mingchen a little bit, yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, we're going to have a Christmas party, so you should come. Oh, I wish I could. I'm okay. planning on trying to go back to the States. Hawaii? Uh, Hawaii and Las Vegas. Okay. Yeah, and stuff. So, well, thank you so much for coming and sharing some of your stories. Definitely, I know we haven't heard all of them, so you'll have to come back. But, um, well, thank you. Appreciate your time. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>